Damar Hamlin, he wore a jacket to the Super Bowl, and oh, was Adrian Peterson unhappy. Now, I know Adrian Peterson, and let me just say it like this. Uh, he wears his convictions on his sleeve. He wears his heart on his sleeve about anything, right? We know Adrian Peterson, a beast at the running back position, but also a firm believer in what he believes in. And obviously, as a Christian, that's where we have this conversation. DeMar Hamlin wore a jacket that uh, Adrian Peterson said was blasphemous, right? He took down his tweet and finally talked to DeMar Hamlin. But before saying that and before having that conversation, he went out there and blasted him for us all to see. He said, quote, you should be thanking God, son. This is blasphemy. We all fall short, but come on, man. I find this disrespectful. Mm. What an impossible place to put DeMar Hamlin in. One, I know why Adrian Peterson said that, because he was truly offended by that jacket. But not just offended by the jacket, but by who wore that jacket. Adrian Peterson and many other people are looking at DeMar Hamlin now in a situation that is beyond high standard. Like, you have survived. You have been born again, basically, because he died flatlined on the football field. And now, since we hear your beliefs, you need to be thanking the Almighty at all times. And DeMar Hamlin, still a human being who will make mistakes, is like, what are you guys talking about? I do thank the Almighty. I do thank my God. But one, I thought that that was really an intrusion on his personal space. Even though he wore a jacket outside, it's still the way that he wanted to display it, and he didn't do it with ill intention. So here's the conversation. Was that just a statement, a fashion statement, or is this truly a scandal? And would this have been a problem if it were me wearing that jacket who didn't flatline on the football field? Obviously not. So now I can hear some of the pushback on this. Little virtue signal in here, right? Like, Adrian, you're not perfect. We know of some of your indiscretions, obviously, in the past. And now you're going to point out this guy's jacket, which I've heard he didn't even know what it meant, like to that degree. He just wore something of fashion and then realized in conversation and in pushback, oh, my bad. I am still a firm believer. He says he gets up every single day now and gives himself 10 deep breaths and thanks to his God, to his Lord. But who are we to question that? Who are we to get in between that relationship? What if he was an atheist? Like, what? Like, a, an atheist has been born again, too. And I'm not talking about in the church. I'm talking about has flatlined and it has relived again. What do we say in that conversation? Obviously, this is not that, but it makes you think. Like, who are we to throw those rocks from this glass house? And I'm looking at this situation, DeMar Hamlin, impossible place. One, he has now this exceedingly high standard to walk around and always be thankful, right? That's part one. Two, he has no peer group. He has no one to learn from and no one to confide in because no one he's going to talk to has flatlined and come back and played football in the limelight. Think about that. Think how narrow his situation is to the point where He's really one of one. And in that situation, this is why I respected what I saw from Fred Taylor. Fred Taylor's my former teammate, a great running back. Should be in the Hall of Fame, but you know how the Hall of Fame goes. We've had that conversation. Fred Taylor's like, hey, man, this ain't it. Y'all need to get out the public eye with this conversation. Adrian, you're an OG. Talk to the young man. I'm sure he didn't mean any harm. I'm paraphrasing, but basically that's how it goes. And in this locker room, and in this world at large, there are times where you just need to grab somebody and say, hey, man, let me step outside for a second. You don't always have to throw it down in front of the locker for the whole world, the whole team to see. This was one of those moments for me. Not because Adrian may not be right in his head, and DeMar Hamlin, without any ill intention and malintent, still could have been looking like, man, why are you bringing my faith into question? You can bring my fashion into question, but don't combine the two. Don't conflate them. And I think this story kind of got out of control in that respect. Obviously, Adrian did come to his senses, realized, oh, you know what? 
I don't need to come at the young man like that. And frankly, I am out of pocket coming at him like that. And I think that right there made people turned off and turned back on into this conversation. You were turned off because you're like, this is a Christian guy blasting another Christian guy. And for those who are like religion, mm -hmm, whatever, they had ammunition. But then you also saw Adrian Peterson take responsibility, show contrition, and actually retract his statements and take it down. Now you all of a sudden look at it like that to me, at least in perception, sounds like the Christian way. So in conversations like this, man, you imagine what DeMar Hamlin is really going through. Like he doesn't even know how to navigate these waters because there's no precedent. Who are you going to look at in terms of, okay, I'm going to learn from that guy and then I'm going to do it this way. People thought it, not only did he die and then he came back to life, but then he died again because that wasn't him at the stadium. Remember that conspiracy theory? Then all of a sudden, oh, no, he's just trying to take advantage of this and create some documentary and just get paid off of it. Is that the worst thing? Like everyone is coming at this guy and it's so fast and so quickly how the tables have turned where now he is also, let's be real, kind of a target. And the guy who's sitting there like, I'm just thankful. I'm trying to figure out my health situation to get back into the NFL. But that's called survivor's remorse. If you really want to talk about what he's going through, there's some survivor's remorse. Like imagine you dying, coming back to life, and still having all these opportunities in front of you. You're like, I escaped something that you're going to read about and see hundreds, thousands of times a day. We are all being told and sold and shown death around us. And this guy survived it. I just think we need to be a little more empathetic and sympathetic to his situation while he figures it out. Because if not, I ain't going to lie to y'all. If you talk about this dude right now in this moment, you don't look sympathetic. You just look a little pathetic.